Hi. When I was cabin crew, um, two or three times a year, we would have something called standby. And it would take a couple of forms. You'd have two, two hours standby from home, or you would have 45 minutes um, standby from a hotel. And you would look at your roster and it would be three days, for example, the 45 minutes, three days, certain hours during the day, where you would be sat in a hotel room with a phone and your suitcase packed for every eventuality. And it could be that you'll get called on day one or you'd have to wait all the way through to day three. And scheduling would phone you and they would say, you might have a night stop New York or a nine day Singapore Sydney. You didn't know. And so when you left home, you literally didn't know when you would be back again. It also meant that because of all of that um, uncertainty, the two trips that followed on your roster generally were taken off you. And so that meant for a whole month, you could not make any plans with any sense of certainty because you didn't know if you'd be in the country. And it was always amazing the number of things that would come up in those months that you desperately wanted to be home for. A meeting, a dinner, a party, a wedding even. even. And sometimes it would work out and you'd be back. And other times, well, you just had to miss out. And I have to say that out of all of the things that I had to do in my flying career, standby was the thing that I would stress out the most about because I like to plan. I like to know where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be there. I also hate missing out on anything. And so if I knew that there was something going on and there was any risk of me missing it, it would actually really upset me. And I flew for nine or 15 years and I never got used to that, never. But the other thing was standby as well, that was always <laughs> a bit stressful, um, was because you didn't know how long you'd be or where in the world you would be, when you packed your suitcase, you had to pack for every eventuality. So I could have been six days on a beach in the Bahamas, very nice. Or I might have had a night stop to Calgary where it could be minus 46 degrees. So in my suitcase, I would have everything from bikinis and sarongs to snow boots and snow jackets. And if you ended up with a, a little night stop to New York, you still had to cart all of that stuff around with you through the airport. And it was actually a bit of a nuisance. But you got used to it, but it was still quite stressful. And I've been thinking about the whole area of planning and how we like to plan, how it's quite natural um, for us to plan. And actually, we're in this, this season at the moment, globally and nationally, and also as a church and individually, where it's really pretty futile to, to plan very far ahead because we don't know what's going to happen, the next, um, the next thing that is going to unfold. And so at the moment we're in the summer holidays. How many people have cancelled summer holidays? How many people have decided to stay at home because it's just not worth um, booking a holiday and having to cancel yet again? How many people have lost jobs? And so therefore plans for future, um, future events or, or whatever have had to be put on hold or are having to be rethought out. As a church, you know, what plans did we have? What things did we think we'd be moving into? And it's all starting to look very different. And of course, when you look at scripture, one scripture sticks out every time and it's Jeremiah 29 verse 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future 
but also have been reading Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so where we've concentrated on the smaller plans that have gone awry, actually now is a really exciting time when we can really start to look at, well, actually, God, what are your plans? What are your plans over my life that actually my holidays and my pension and all of those other considerations kind of got in the way of? And I've got no control over this. Very few of us actually can say we've got control over our plans at the moment because this is a whole much bigger scenario going on. How liberating would it be if we completely surrendered to God's plans and acknowledged that his ways are much higher um, and his thinking is just so much further and far reaching than ours could ever be. And all of those dreams and visions and words that we might have had spoken over us about God's plans for us, actually, is it now the time that God is is going to, we're giving him the opportunity to do that. We're not getting in his way anymore. And isn't that liberating? And I don't know where I'm going with that exactly in my life. I know there are certain things. And it's like, well, God, there's nothing I can do about this. So you're going to have to work this out. And I trust you. I actually really trust you to do this. But the other thing that I would ask you to bear in mind is the suitcase. Because where you might have been thinking your life was going in one direction, or your months and years were going in one direction, and you've kind of packed your bag accordingly, actually God might well be saying, eh -eh, no, different direction. I've got something much bigger for you. I've got something far different. I've got a place I want you to be or something I want you to do or somebody I want you to speak to and actually you need to kind of tip out the stuff that you would packed in anticipation in your bag and you need to be putting a whole lot of different kit in there for the journey I'm going to take you on. And I don't know where that is but I do know that God is always true to his word and so when he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, what we can say to that is yes and amen, because God promises and he keeps his promise. So, don't know where the destination's going to be, but enjoy the journey.